My name is Claudia Quinones. I'm undocumented, unafraid, and here to stay. Yo, John Kim, thank you for joining us on the Onoit channel. And for our viewers, we are going to be examining the issue of the DACA uh, children, now no longer children, and whether they are going to be allowed to stay. Uh, Yo, John Kim, joining us from Washington, D.C., was at the Supreme Court yesterday, November 12, when the case was argued. And Yo, thank you for joining us on the channel. Um, give us an overview, if you would, first of all, of the, the issue as you understand it. Well, so Terry, uh, yesterday Supreme Court had a hearing on three cases bundled in one. Basically, uh, the core, the gist of the hearing was whether the President Trump and Trump administration's decision or its effort to shut down the stock up program, is it legal? Is it justifiable? That was the big question uh, dealt yesterday. And uh, of course, a lot of it, because it impacts a lot of people, in fact, over like 800,000 people actually in the United States, it's a big issue. So thousands of people gathered in front of the Supreme Court uh, calling for you know, just not revoking DACA program because immigrants, uh, undocumented people in this country need DACA program. It's their one hope. So that's that's what happened yesterday. Before we go too far, let's just, uh, you ran some video. There was a number of protesters outside uh, people who were uh, DACA, we say the DACA children, they used to be children, now they're grown up because they've been here uh, long enough. Uh, let's just listen to one of the uh, a bit of video that you rolled on yesterday outside the Supreme Court. Immigrant youth and our families are here to stay and that our home is here. Yeah. No matter what, we're going to keep fighting um, till we get something and for our people to stay here because this is home. This is my home. Yes, my Mexico is my home too, but I live here. My family is all here. So obviously these uh, protesters who are now uh, now grown up, but uh, the argument is that a lot of them were brought here by their parents when they were children. It's not like they personally decided to come into the country illegally and uh, that this is for many of them the only country they ever remember living in and they feel, I think, in their hearts as if they are Americans. Is that uh, fair enough to say? Yes, that is actually very right. A lot of people, uh, I'd say the majority of the protesters in the rally actually consider themselves American because America is basically the first, uh, the only country they ever remember living. And their family, I mean, they were born, uh, they were raised since very early age in the United States. They eat like Americans, they think like Americans, they talk like Americans. And that's just how they perceive themselves as Americans. And we should say um, that uh, the Trump that that first of all the DACA. What tell us again what DACA stands for? So DACA is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. It uh, started with in two uh, thousand twelve with the Obama administration. It's basically. Uh, allowing people, allowing teens older than 16 and adults younger than 30 were brought into the states when they were children, basically earlier when they were younger than 16, to allow them to work and study without the fear of def being deported, basically. Yeah, so this was not passed by the Congress. This was done under President Obama or by President Obama uh, as an executive order. And so President Trump came in and issued an executive order to undo that uh, and saying that this was not legal, that the President of the United States, President Obama, uh, I think the Trump administration argues, did not have the authority on his own accord to issue grant these people uh, the ability to stay in, that that was in kind of violation of the immigration law. Uh, and so I, I, am I correct in saying that and that this is basically it's an issue of maybe not the merits of, you know, from, from the heart we might say we can understand where these people want to stay and why, but the argument is one of the rule of law and did the President, President Obama have the right to do this um, and can it be undone? And so when President Obama or President Trump, I'm sorry, uh, issued his uh, executive order undoing DACA, then it was challenged and went to the court system and now, as we see it, has gone all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. 
<laughs> You're absolutely right. So this was not passed by the Congress. This uh, was just signed by President Obama back in 2012 as an executive order. And that's why the Trump administration is also claiming that they have the right and they have the power to sign another executive order nullifying the previous executive order. And that that is basically the at the core of Trump administration's reasons for a calling the shutdown of the DACA program. And he also backs his claim by saying that the crime rate within the DACA recipients, the DACA community has risen to a historic record. And that's uh, just inhibiting what the immigration policies and immigration system we have in the United States and the status quo. The, uh, the DACA uh, people want to stay. I think everyone gets that. Are there other things aside from just staying that they're looking to achieve? Right. So a lot of people actually want citizenship. They want to be here. They want to live here. They want their family and generations after their generations to be lawful, be lawful citizens of the United States. And that's that was actually another big point raised in the rally, because, of course, they want they do not want to revoke DACA program because that's the only thing that's letting all these protesters stay in the United States. But they still are living under the fear of being deported after uh, their current DACA application is is terminated, basically. So they were also talking about how they want this as this to act as a progressive step towards getting citizenships, getting a uh, lawful residency in the United States for all the immigrants, for all the undocumented people and DACA recipients, and on. Let's, uh, another bit of video that you shot uh, the other day, uh, I think the, some of these stories are, are rather compelling. And while we talk about the rule of law, it's always interesting to have some insight into the impact that this would have on some of the individuals who are directly affected. Let's listen to this uh, bit of video. It runs about one minute. We'll come back and talk about that. My parents applied for political asylum when I was 10 years old. In 2014, which is 20 years later, was when that application was finally approved. Now, because of the immigration backlog, it took 20 years. And in that time, I was over 21 and I was married which disqualified me from having a green card. So today, my parents that filed that same asylum case have their green card, but their 10-year-old son and my, my older brother and sister, we are undocumented standing on DACA because there's no pathway, because of this red tape, because of these politics. I don't have a pathway to citizenship, and not just me, but millions of others are in the same circumstance. So when people say, hey, do it legally, stand in line, just say, we have, give us a line, give us a road, we'll stand in there right now and today. Interesting, Byte, and uh, you, you know, you, you, I think most people, as again, would feel very much the compassion, I mean, for these people who were brought as children, and we can see now that man is uh, married in the United States. As I understand it, the Trump uh, administration is actually saying that they would probably let most of these people stay, even if they win the case, that they're not necessarily going to throw them out. I, uh, I mean, we'll have to see about that, but, but I think that they're also saying that at that point, they, they can't cut in line as far as getting uh, if they want to become U.S. citizens, they would still have to go through the process of any other immigrant. Is that your understanding? Well, so by President Trump saying that he's going to let the immigrants, let the DACA recipients stay in the United States, it means that only, it, it's kind of like a deal. So he's making a deal with the Democrats and the Supreme Court saying that if the Supreme Court remedies with the overturn, then he is going to suggest a deal with the Democrats to let these DACA recipients uh, to stay in the states. But if the Supreme Court doesn't um, agree with the Trump administration, then who knows what's going to happen? Like the deal may not happen, or it might happen out of you know humane love. But we honestly don't know what's going to happen with that. 
Yeah, well, and I, I will remind the view, uh, viewers that uh, when the Supreme Court hears these cases, uh, they take all their cases uh, under advisement. They don't issue, typically, they don't issue uh, their rulings until June. So uh, while we are covering this in November, we're going to be another, you know, roughly eight months before we might know. On the other hand, many of these people have been here for, what, 20 or 25 years, perhaps, uh, uh, since the time they came into the country. So I don't know eight months, although one can, again, feel for them in that regard as far as they must be on pins and needles. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you think is significant that we should add to the story? Well, yes. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on what happened with it inside the courtroom, I think it's important to highlight that out of the nine justices we have, four of the five conservative justices voted, not voted, but kind of leaned towards Trump administration saying that it is okay to shut down the program while the four uh, four out of the four liberal justices we have at the Supreme Court said this is ridiculous, this is life and death issue, and this should not be taken seriously. So it was very, it was strictly divided, strictly along the party lines. But we have to be mindful that this is just an oral argument hearing. It's not uh, where we decide anything. And as Terry mentioned just now, the ruling will come out in you know, after like eight months after from this oral argument. So it really doesn't mean anything. It's just the progress. It's just like, it's to show the progress we're going to make even in the courtroom. So we're still going to have discussions. The liberals and conservatives, they're all just going to keep on working on this together until they reach a decision. Okay. Well, we'll uh, hopefully we've added something to the understanding of the argument and uh, Again, it's it's a, obviously a very emotional argument for many people. And one thing that you know, I just often wondered when you when I, uh, as a uh, naturally born American, I just sometimes wonder when you hear the, how long it takes to become uh, a U.S. citizen. It's uh, something like seven years, and apparently also an expensive process. One wonders if if just the immigration process can't be sped up, uh, that that's also part of what should be maybe part of the whole immigration reform when we talk about it as Americans. Uh, but anyway, uh, Yo Jung Kim, we appreciate you taking the time. You're, we should say you're coming to us from the Medill School of Journalism, Washington, D.C. Bureau. Of course, uh, Medill, part of the Northwestern University, a great Illinois university, and you yourself were what, born in uh, South Korea, right? That's right. I, I don't consider myself an immigrant, but people categorize me an immigrant. <laughs> well, we, we, we appreciate you. Thank you for your reporting from Washington. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you for us. having me. All right. Take care. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.